Well, there is lots to talk about with our next guest from TSN 1260 Edmonton, CFL on TSN, Dustin Nielsen joining us, a guy that knows his way around a sim, computer-generated games. How you doing, Dusty? I'm doing just fine, boys. Thanks for having me. Yes. Look, I'll get to the sim in a second. First, you tweeted yesterday, what does the CFL need in a stronger CFL? And I'm very interested what were in your mentions. What were some of the ideas? Oh, uh, you know what, buddy? I was I was just encouraged by how many people actually uh, actually replied. I mean, it was a great conversation yesterday. If you go back and look into it, I think we're closing in on like 300 replies. So people obviously care about it. Uh, my co-host here, you guys know Eric, Kenneth Eric. He, uh, he's very passionate as well. There, I mean, there's everything from get a video game, you know, do a better job marketing your fantasy, you know, better better deals on, on ticket prices, you know, more commitment to a student section and promoting at local universities to get a younger generation out with the game. You know, moving the season to start in, in, in May and end it with a great cup on Canadian Thanksgiving. Like, at this point with the CFL, as much as we love it, and, and I do, I love the game. I mean, in a perfect world, I wouldn't want to see anything change you know, 100% on the field. But off the field, you know, there's some areas for improvement. And, and I think it's just important to have the discussion. And I was, uh, I was really happy to see that happening on my account yesterday. What are your thoughts on what the CFL needs when it comes back? Oh man! I mean, there's 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 so many things we we talked about. It. it would be great if like Brandy and Brosy and in February sat down and, and laid out a lot of these aspects that that we've already been been talking about. But I mean, I I look at it from you know how I if the, the key here is to continue to grow the fan base and continue locking some of these younger fans so that we have another generation of Canadian Football League fans over the next over the next little while. And and one of the things that I always look at. For me, you know, from a National Football League perspective, I was never a huge fan of the league. I was a fan of the Detroit Lions, and I'd watch the online game when I could get it as a kid growing up. But then, you know, as an adult, I got sucked into the fantasy side of things, and it became made me very passionate about the entire league for probably the last five or six, seven years. So I, I think I, I know the league and TSN, and, and we have some things already available, but I'm not sure what everybody does a great job of marketing yet. And that's the way to, to suck in a lot of people who might be you know, big time fantasy football players, but they don't usually get started until September when the NFL kicks off uh, to lock that in. I know they've got the daily fantasy and stuff, but I think they need to do a better job of promoting something like that and, and a better job having relationships with, with some of these betting sites because, I mean, that's one of the biggest things with football is, is the fantasy and betting industry. And, and I, I think as a league, you need to embrace it and, and, and use that to, to help you long term. I just uh, want to pause for a second. One of our viewers, Ryan Schultz, chimes in from Manitoba. He's watching on Game Plus, and he says, I need me a Roddy P shirt. Dupes, look up from your phone for a second. RodPetersonShop.com. Put the camera on this guy. Do you yes. want to sell it? RodPetersonShop.com. What do we got in there? Uh, uh, T-shirts. There might be a couple of hoodies left. We're running low on stock because it's going crazy. We just put in uh, new orders of golf balls are in there for the golf season, the Under Armour heat polos. So there's a few options. Okay, there, there you go. Thank you, Ryan in Manitoba, for watching on Game Plus. I'll this is this. great, guys. <laughs> As you wait. I, I love it. Like, you got the swag going. It's, it's awesome. Hi, Duke. How are you, man? Good to I'm see great, you. pal. I'm great. I miss you. <laughs> Canada West teammates here. Yeah. Well, we say, Dusty, we are a franchise. We've got a clothing line. We have a TV deal. We now have a mascot, Ricky the Iguana. You might have seen that we've I got more that. yeah we're gonna have more things coming because we are a franchise and when i there's ricky right there on your screen when i say marketing the cfl i'm not that concerned about it anymore because we're building this and marketing here but i will say this david benefield is a must add or must follow on social media like he's so good and he just said the marketing's been a problem we need to market the players and i don't care if a guy's practicing and then grabbing his lunch pail and going to work in, at the gm factory in the afternoon that's what the CFL was built on. I think, Dustin, if Canadians know who these players are, and maybe that's their deal, they have a second job, they will watch. But right now, it's kind of a faceless league, in my opinion, that way. They know a few of the stars, but they don't know the players. And that's where it, that's Benefield's thing. Market the players. Make it sexy if you can. Yeah, and we were, we were talking about that, Eric and I, off the air after our show today. You know, and, and he was looking at, because you see a lot of people say, well, you know, I buy a jersey of a guy and he leaves, he tries to go to the National Football League and we never hear from him again. Well, you can basically, I mean, from a marketing perspective, you don't need to make, you know, it be known, but you can basically divide things into into like three, right? You've got these guys who you know, might be here for one or two years as a star and then leave. So then, you know, you know, market them as, hey, come watch him play, even like before he leaves, like get your eyes on this guy right now. And then you've got that other level of players 
you know, the veteran Canadian guys that you know are going to be around for a long time. And it's easy to have a great relationship uh, in the community with them. Market those guys in a different way. Get those guys out at schools. Get those guys out going to, uh, you know, helping with minor football and things along those lines. And then you've kind of got the, the guys in between, which there are, are, are guys from, from the United States who come up. And, and, you know, a lot of them we see as quarterbacks, but other guys in other positions as well that they're just they're not they're not going to be leaving. They've already been here for three to five years. And they're going to play for two or three more. And, and that's a whole nother level. So those are the guys that you can really kind of promote and get out there and say, hey, buy this guy's jersey. He's not going anywhere. He's not going to be a guy who's, who's taking off. So there's there's like different layers that I think you could market the players at. And, and that's just one of the conversations that you hope uh, you hope the league continues to have here over the next seven, eight months. Well, I can tell you this, too. Um, just having guys on this show, you might know some of them. For instance, Aaron Grimes, former Edmonton player. Uh, Brian Burnham. Dijon Brissett, the number two overall pick by the Argos, whose brother plays with the Raptors. We, we bring him on the show, and it's like, dang, those are great guys. I want to follow that guy. It's exposure. It's getting it out. And I understand the media coverage in the major centers hinders that a little bit but uh i i know this dustin when you talk cfl in edmonton it rings true that is a fantastic cfl town you know, we were we were talking about it far far hands in town covering the canucks right now so we we caught up last night for a drink and, and chatted about everything that obviously went down in the league over the over the last little while and and far hands a guy who's been around for a long time and he's covered all the different leagues and he was telling me last night and, and in my experience so far i completely agree with him there's no better athlete to deal with than a Canadian Football League athlete. I mean, a lot of these guys are just regular guys like a lot of us. They, they, you know, they, they, they actually want to chat with you. They want to have an opportunity to say what's on their mind. They think it's great when they get to come in for a pregame interview uh, on TSN. And you don't get that from a lot of these other leagues. So, I mean, just here in town, I know Ryan King very well. Kinger is an absolutely great guy. I'm really good buddies with Sean White, who, who's, you know, this is a guy who I love having on my show. He's absolutely hilarious. And, plays hockey with me like these guys are in the community uh you don't get that from pretty much any other sport in north america uh let alone right here in canada so that's one aspect of it and you know another thing that we talked about a lot and we've had a ton of great reaction over the last couple of days talking about what continues to need to happen and 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 own it like own this league for being canadian like this is this is what we are this is our football uh you don't need to try to adjust things to to go globally and things along those lines i understand that understand that you know that's a nice way to grow the game but there's so much more that we could be doing right here in our country to to get it to where we want it to be to get it to where in some markets it used to be um i think you have to own this game for what it is and that's canadian football and a very passionate fan base and once you lock those people in you know they're going to understand the buzz around these teams and they're going to be locked in and that fan base is going to continue to grow so um... no it just froze. Clark tells me they're going to bring him back here. Um, Chris in Toronto is watching. He says, lots of great ideas here, guys. Rod, you talk about the bigger centers. How do we get the Argos, Lions, and Alouettes more relevant in their markets? Uh, hang on. We'll come back on that. And I don't mind talking about all this CFL stuff today. I don't because um, we're at a critical point in the, in the league's history right now. But Robin in Prince Albert writes in and he says, tough to follow the team when the guys are on one- and two-year contracts. Stop! And Dustin, you must have thoughts on this. If you heard what I just said, the, 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 you see this a lot on social media. Hard to fall in love with a player when he's only here one or two years. James Neal, four teams, four years. It happens in every league. Josh Donaldson, where has he been? I can't even keep track of him anymore. Minnesota, and he's in Atlanta last year. And the it says stop with that. It's wrong. If you're worried about buying a jersey, yeah. go buy retro. This is one small yeah, exactly. concession the players have, and they want short contracts. I say give it to them. That's my take on that. Yeah, I mean, and and look, if, if you want a guy on your team that you want to get a jersey of, he's going to be around. There's a lot of guys. I mean, there are guys on these teams who have been here for an extended uh, period of time. I mean, you can identify that, and you can go out and, and get that jersey. And, yeah, I get it. A jersey's, you know, a, a little bit of an investment for sure, and you don't want to have to, you know, switch it in a year and a half. Uh, but what that does mean is that you've got a very talented player cheering, playing for your team. Uh, so why not support him when he's there? And, and it only looks good for your program and for your franchise if, if you're graduating guys to the highest level of football uh, south of the border. So, um, you know, to me, to me, that just seems like that excuse. And nothing against fans because they are very passionate, and that's the best part about it. But to me, that just seems like an excuse as to, well, why, 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 why don't you follow the league? Ah, it's too difficult. That's... I mean, if you want to follow the league, you can follow the league, Rod. 
Oh, <laughs> absolutely. So here's another one, by the way. On the MLSC story that I've unearthed and nobody's jumped on, and that's fine. I was on TSN 1200 Ottawa the other day. Dean Brown was, was hosting the voice of the Senators. He said he'd heard the story, too. As a matter of fact, he's heard it so far that... If you are a season ticket holder of the Raptors and Leafs, you'll get a pair of season you'll get a pair of free tickets to the Argos, probably seasons. He goes, "Does this make the CFL look bad?" That's a rumor that's out there in Eastern Canada, and I said, "No, Dean, it doesn't. We just need to get people into the stadium because the CFL product is so good. I firmly believe that they will come back." Your thoughts on the MLSC rumor and and Dean's comment on that? Well, I mean, I think it's it's that same way with any product. I mean, with your guys' show right here, right? Like, you're proud of your product. So how do you get more eyes on it? And if that, you know, using a promotion or using some other other brand to, to bring people and get eyes on your brand, then that's what you're going to do. Like, that doesn't just have to be a Canadian Football League thing. I mean, a lot of companies have probably had success building their brand by doing it that exact way. So, I mean, is it a great look that Argos tickets are – are tossed in with with other with other brands. Uh, no, it's it's not a great look, but to me, it doesn't it doesn't make the league look any worse. It's just an opportunity to continue to grow a fan base, and that that like overall in the bigger scheme of things, that might be the biggest issue for the Canadian Football League. Not not in the next seven eight months, but over the next ten to fifteen years, and that is to get a generation of twenty to twenty five year olds that you can lock in that they're going to be here for you for the next twenty years, and when their kids. Um, when their kids are born, that they're going to be watching Canadian football as well, because that is that's one of the biggest things that I think they're battling right now. Is that um, you know you you go to some well actually Farhan share another story from him last night. He said in Vancouver, I mean you go to a BC Lions game, it is a completely different crowd from the from the crew you're going to see at the soccer game. I think the BC Lions just don't get anybody from downtown Vancouver to come to their games, and 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 who knows that if you said hey man here's here's two free tickets. Come buy a couple drinks. Maybe you're going to buy a souvenir. You're still going to make some money off it. If they're not there, the seats are just empty anyway. Um, get some eyes on it, and you know if you if you get tickets to 50 people and and they 50 of them come and 10 of them want to come back again, then guess what? You're ahead of the game. Guys, can you put up the comment from Larry Langle? I know they're coming in like a slot machine right now, but an Argo fan in Toronto that wrote in. Can you find it? And I, I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to just shift the orders. Here it is, Rod. I'm in Toronto. All this marketing stuff is great, but let's not just talk about it. Let's physically do it, especially in the GTA market. It's the same gung-ho attitude all the time. Oh, listen, John Lynch says it. The Atana Club. All talk and no action. Look, it's their job. I can't speak for them. They need to stop talking about it. They need to start doing it. It's boots on the ground. It's word-of-mouth marketing. It's all those things. It's not my job. Um, but I mean, just say this, Dustin, when the Oilers lost out to Chicago on that Friday, were you just venting that night? I hope you I hope you didn't get upset with what I said. It's on the players. I still feel that way. Were you venting? Or do you actually feel Dave Tippett has some onus for the playing around exit? Look, uh, he definitely should take some of the heat. 100%. I, mean, I get it. I mean, there's, there's nobody that played in that series for the Edmonton Oilers that deserves a pass for the way that you saw what happened to the Blackhawks against the Golden Knights. And the Golden Knights are a very good hockey team, but the Blackhawks aren't a great team. And the Oilers blew it. And the, like Dave Tippett, to me, is perfect for this team. Like Ken Holland brought him in. I like for the first seventy games of the year. I don't even remember a time that I was overly critical of Tippett because I thought he did an excellent job with this team, which is why it pained me to watch him against Chicago. And I was just confused. I was just I was just surprised a little bit by the fact that he had the best line in the National Hockey League for a couple of months and didn't go to it until there were seven minutes left in an elimination game. And I just, it was, it was like bewildered. It just didn't make any sense for me. So that, I guess it was because I'd been such a supporter of him all year that I was a little frustrated with the fact that he made a decision that it just seems to go so against the grain. I mean, all year for the Oilers, if, if the team wasn't going within like a period, you know, there would be some sort of quick line change. And then you get through an entire series without, (laughs) <laughs> but it was it was just strange. I was just I was just confused. But it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't doesn't make me have any less faith in Dave Tippett moving forward. I just I'd like to get to the bottom of exactly what he was thinking. And I know he said you can't win with one line, but the Oilers played their best this year uh, with that line together. And you don't ever have one line when Connor McDavid's on your other. Yes, for sure. 
and by the way, if you haven't known, once you're on, once I'm on your side, you can do no wrong. Dave Tippett's in that class for me. Randy Ambrosi's in that class for me. You're in that class for me. So I get it. I, yeah, exactly. So, but, but I like, you, like on top of it yeah. all, like it's not Dave Tippett's fault that his blue line could not move the puck in their own end. Like the, the, the coach can only do, but he does have the buttons to push to try to change things. Didn't do it in that series. And you know what? Like in the end, maybe maybe that was him. And he knows he's going to be here for a while. Maybe that was him sending just a message to that group, being like, "Look, you need to go out and find a better way to do it because I'm not going to allow you." And like in like this this weird sort of playoff win right now in this five round series. Not saying that he didn't want to win, but maybe in the long run, the message being sent to the rest of those guys that can't bail you out with one line every time. Maybe maybe a year or two from now. They're in that situation, and they're better because of it. Dusty, I always appreciate the time. Can we please do it more? Yes, for sure. Anytime, as long as you send me one of those uh, those hoodies. I love hoodies. So I'll take oh, one okay. Of those. Hoodies? Yeah, absolutely. Done. Done. All right. Done. Done. All right, Dusty. Have a good one. Stay safe. Right, see you guys. Dusty Nielsen, TSN 1260 Edmonton. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 